Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video we are talking essays and I get asked a lot from students on Instagram and TikTok and even on YouTube if there was any paragraph or topic that you had to learn that you could apply to as many essays as possible what would I recommend? And that's exactly what I'm gonna share with you today. Now you asked for one topic, I'm actually gonna give you two topics that I think you can apply to almost any essay title. So I'm gonna talk you through what those two topics are and give you some examples of how you could link them to almost any title. So topic number one is chemiosmosis. And this could be chemiosmosis in photosynthesis or respiration. Again, that gives you even more flexibility into how many titles you can apply it to. So a quick recap on chemiosmosis. This is the process where you have a buildup of hydrogen ions or protons on one side of a membrane. In photosynthesis, it's across the thylakoid membrane and in respiration, it's across the Christi. And what we have happening is the protons are pumped through proteins to the other side of the membrane. You get a buildup of these protons, which creates an electrochemical gradient, and that then means the protons move down the electrochemical gradient through the enzyme ATP synthase, and ATP is made. Now that's a very brief overview. If you do want to have the full deal, all the details on that process, I'll link the videos up here so you can check that out first, and then come on back and see how you could apply this to almost any title. So the first way you could link it is, quite obviously I'd say, to respiration or photosynthesis. So any question that loosely linked to either of those processes, you could talk about chemiosmosis because it is a stage in both of those chemical reactions. Now more likely I think is any of the following ways that you could link it. So one link could be the importance of membranes and that has come up as a title before but not for a long time. And chemiosmosis, the possibility of creating that electrochemical gradient is only because of the membrane and the reason that the protons have to go through ATP synthase afterwards to make ATP is they can't transport through the membrane because they are charged. So the importance of membranes it would link perfectly to that title. The next one would be if you had a title linked to the importance of ions. And again, that has come up once or twice already on the new spec, but the importance of ions, this would be about the hydrogen ions. And for this one, you talk about the process of those hydrogen ions being pumped across the membrane, creating that electrochemical gradient, and then moving down their gradient through ATP synthase. And the hydrogen ions here are really important because it results in the production of ATP, and ATP provides energy for all metabolic processes. The next idea is if there was a title to do with the importance of concentration gradients. Now this hasn't come up before, and I think it could link to a whole range of ideas in biology, so it could be a good potential of a title that might come up this year. Now on this example, the concentration gradient that we are making is the electrochemical gradient of all of those protons on one side of the membrane. And it is so important that that concentration gradient was made because it results in the protons moving down their concentration gradient. And again, you can see where this is going through ATP synthase to make ATP important for metabolic processes. So we're starting to see a pattern here. You would learn a standard paragraph and just tweak it each time to emphasize what is important based on the title. But fundamentally, it remains the same every time. The process results in the production of ATP, and ATP is important for metabolic processes. Some more examples though of what you could still link it to further than what we've said are the importance of active transport, the importance of facilitated diffusion, the importance of movement. Those three could all be separate titles and they have a similar concept around them. The active transport in chemiosmosis is the pumping of the protons from one side of the membrane to the other. And it's using the energy from the electron transport chain. So that'd be your active transport. The facilitated diffusion is the movement of the protons down their concentration gradient through ATP synthase. And the importance of movement, it could be either of those processes. The next two ideas, again, I'm gonna join them together. They could be separate essay titles, but they're similar in concept. So you could have the importance of proteins or the importance of enzymes. 
And if you ask the importance of proteins, you could talk about the proteins embedded within the membrane, which make the electron transport chain. And that is where the electrons are going to bump along, releasing the energy for the protons to be actively transported to the other side of the membrane. If it's about enzymes, it's the ATP synthase. That is the enzyme that is involved in the facilitated diffusion of the hydrogen ions back down their concentration gradient. And in both cases, it's important because it results in the production of ATP. And the final title links to what we've said throughout. If there was a title linked to ATP, because this process is creating ATP, you could link it to that. Now that is already a long list and there's probably even more titles it links to that I haven't said just now. And if you can think of any others, please put them in the comments. Let's see what other titles that you can think of that this chemiosmosis paragraph could be linked to. So that is paragraph number one, learn a paragraph on chemiosmosis and then practice how you'd slightly tweak it to fit multiple different essays. Because you would have to tweak it to make sure that the emphasis is linking to whichever concept the title was about. Now, before I go on to the second one, I do just want to point out, if you do find this concept of linking topics to other topics quite challenging, which it is, it's a harder part of the essay, then I've got something that will really help you with this. And it is my A-level notes for AQA. For my AQA A-level notes, for every single topic, at the end of the topic, I have a yellow box that says essay links. I give you a selection of options of how you could link that bit of theory to other topics in an essay. So essentially, I've done the links for you. You then just have to remember them rather than trying to work it out in the first place. So I'll link those in the description below if you want to get your hands on a set of my notes because they're helpful in terms of all the theory. But in particular today, we're thinking about the essay links. Right. And now the second topic that you could link to lots of different areas of biology is proteins. So if you learn a standard paragraph on proteins, and when I say proteins, I'm thinking the structure of proteins. So you could be talking about the amino acid sequence being the primary structure, talking about the tertiary structure, quaternary structure, all the different bonds. That could be like your standard protein paragraph. And the reason that is really applicable is for all of these suggestions, I'm going to go through of how you can link it to multiple topics. Topic number one is immunity. So once you've done your standard paragraph talking about how you get that tertiary structure, how it provides the unique 3D shape, you could then link it to antibodies in immunity and talk about that unique shape antigen binding site on every antibody and it's because of that unique 3D shape determined by the tertiary structure and the amino acid sequence that they're able to bind to particular antigens and provide long-term immunity. The next idea is enzymes, proteins and enzymes, classic combination. So similar idea in that it's the primary sequence determines the location of the bonds in the tertiary structure. The tertiary structure provides a unique 3D shape, naming those ionic hydrogen disulfide bonds. And then the unique shape is how we link it to enzymes. So enzymes with that unique shape active site, that is how they're able to bind to a particular substrate, lower the activation energy, and then that would be the route that you would go down. So for this proteins topic, that's gonna be the running theme this time. We're gonna be talking about the structure, how that structure creates a unique 3D shape, and then we'll link it to lots of different examples. So we've already done antibodies, enzymes, Next is haemoglobin. So we've got a completely different topic now, but again, haemoglobin, this time a quaternary structure protein, because of that unique 3D shape, it's able to bind with oxygen. And you could link this to the idea of different affinities for oxygen under different environmental conditions. So different partial pressures of oxygen or partial pressures of carbon dioxide. So that would be how we'd link it to a title um, around haemoglobin or transport of oxygen. Potential number four is membrane proteins. So you'd have your standard paragraph about the structure of proteins, and now the unique 3D shape is going to be linking to carrier proteins and channel proteins, and how they are able to bind with particular substances because of that unique 3D shape. And that could then be linked to a whole range of different topics where you have membrane proteins involved, such as we've just went through chemiosmosis, 
or it could be generating an action potential or absorption or translocation in plants and so on. Transcriptional factors is the next one where we're thinking about these unique 3D shapes and your transcriptional factor, because it's got a unique 3D shape, it's able to bind to a particular sequence of bases on DNA and that is then involved in initiating transcription and therefore controlling protein synthesis. So all of those first lot are all to do with the concept of shapes fitting together. The last two examples I have are slightly different. So one of them is muscles. So you could have your paragraph on protein structure, and then we're gonna link it to muscles, and the two proteins would be actin and myosin. Again, there is a bit of a link here to do with shapes fitting together, because the myosin head is able to bind to the actin because of those complementary 3D shapes. And that is then how we get the sliding filament theory. So that sliding of the actin across the myosin so muscles can contract. And then the last one, this one is a completely different concept though. So this idea is tissue fluid. And the reason that tissue fluid is reabsorbed back into the capillaries is because large soluble proteins remain in the capillaries that lowers the water potential of the blood in the capillaries. So water or water from the tissue fluid gets reabsorbed back into the capillaries by osmosis. So that time your paragraph on proteins might not be so linked to the 3D shape, but it's the concept that some tertiary structure proteins are soluble, but they're also large. So they're not gonna be able to fit out the tiny gaps between the cells in the capillary walls. Okay, wow, so that was a lot of biology in that short space of time, but that's the beauty of the essay. You fit in so much biology into just one essay showing how it all links together. So hopefully that's given you some ideas of how if you just learnt chemiosmosis or proteins, you could apply it to so many different titles. What you need to practice is writing those two topic paragraphs and then seeing how you would tweak the emphasis of each paragraph to a particular title, because that is gonna be the key. Now, if you do want more help with this and understanding the mark scheme even more, then I definitely recommend you check out this video next. This is my video where I talk you through the mark scheme, explain how to write the essay and how to get full marks. So I hope you have found this helpful. If you have, then make sure you are subscribed and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next week.